Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, this uh, little project is my second battery build and it was inspired by a guy called Andy Kirby who does a number of um, videos on his e-bikes and stuff like that and battery builds for those and he makes some horrendously fast machines. <laughs> However, one of those uh, videos, I'll put a link in the, in the in the description, but one of those videos showed him running his bikes on default 72 volt or something like that, uh, drill batteries, high powered drill batteries. Well, I looked those up and they're hundreds of pounds and I can't afford that. However, about a week later, I was walking through Lidl and I found these. These are 12 volt power drill batteries or power tool batteries, uh, four amp hours each. So my home built battery was 24 volts and was about five and a half amps, amp hours. Um, so I figured, why don't I just overvolt my 24 volt motor, put a 36 volt controller on there, buy three of these and create a 36 volt battery. Um, so that's what this is about. It's about how I mounted them, how they ran, and how I was robbed blind, because these are not 12 volt batteries, not by a long way. Anyway, enjoy. batteries something like that so I need to find out the diameter of that and see if we can fit that in nicely okay let's do that Okay, Duke. The reason why I'm reversing them is when they're in series I want the plus from this one to hit the negative from that one and what I don't really want to do is have to cross the wires like that because if they get hot and melt they could actually start forming a short there so I'm just going to go straight like that and then it can't happen right I need a set square Okay, I'm going to put the wiring harness in. Basically, that's the top going up like that. The wiring will go up the main pipe there and be hidden underneath here. So I'm going to get rid of that one, don't need that one. But these are going to run along there to there. I finally got my son to use the lawnmower and do something. Please don't ask me how it's expensive. Right. It's going to go in like that. Release. 
Okay, so we're looking at the wiring harness. I've cut the uh, this one off because we don't need that. This is going to follow that and one sort of connection here somewhere. Go up and up, up. That one's going to go this side. So I'm going to work out how to make a good solid connection against two bits in the battery. And I'm thinking this. If I can put that in there, like that, then when the battery slots in, it will do that. That looks pretty neat. I think I'm going to go with that. So this is the old way of charging, put that out, <clears throat> take this apart, <coughs> switch that on, there we go, take this, uh, this is the 1, 2, 3, 4S, that's the three S. So this is the four S. Uh, one. Yeah. That's the four S. Lipo charge. Uh, turn it down to an amp. No, that's it. One point five amps. Four S. Right, so that's now charging the 4S section of my battery. Um, when that's done, I have to, which takes about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. I then have to do it on the other side. So I have to have this set up here. That's the old way of charging, well, charging this battery. Now let's see what the new charging regime is. Okay, the new charging regime. Done. And it will take an hour. And I got another one of these for the third battery. That's it. That's fully charged. 36.8. Mm, do some maths there soon. So why are we a bit disappointed in our uh, battery? So each of my batteries are supposed to be 12 volts and they are when fully charged, they're 12.6 volts. So that's great, um, but there seems to be something amiss here because they should be 14, at least 14 volts. And this is why. This is discharge curve for an 18650 battery. And this is the reason why the industry uses the term nominal voltage and the nominal voltage for an 18650 is 3.7 volts. It is where the majority of the capacity of the battery can be discharged. So from 4.2, which is the fully charged battery, to 3.9, we lose 15% of the battery almost immediately, uh, which is a phenomenal drop. But then it starts to chill out a bit, and a lot of the charge will go down here. And the industry have decided that 3.7 volts is a rough approximation of where uh, the voltage should be for the majority of the discharge cycle. And then over here, it just dives again and, and goes to full depletion. So when you're stating that you have a 12 volt battery, the industry standard is 4S, which is four batteries in series. And what that means is they get four at fully charged is 4.2, which actually gives you 16.8 volts. 
but 70% of the capacity time is at this nominal 3.7 so if you add four of those together you get 14.8 volts which is above 12 volts again which is great so a stated an industry stated 12 volt battery should be 4s and in fact for most of the time it will be 14.8 volts when someone uses their own made up line cheating standard they're using 3s so yeah when you've got a fully charged battery at 4.2 volts and you've got three of them you get 12.6 volts great i got my 12 volts however for 70 percent of the time if we use the nominal voltage we're actually only getting 11.1 .1 volts and that's not 12 volts not at all not even close so what happens when we create we put three of them together and create a 36 volt battery well in a 36 volt battery the industry standard says you should have 10 in series 10 3.6 uh, 3.7 volt batteries in series to create a 36 volt battery so what have we got we've got 10 in series fully charged 4.2 volts gives us 42 volts big tick above our 36 volts and 70 percent of the time if you've got 10 in series at 3.7 volts nominal charge you will have 37 volts which means for closing on 75 to 80 percent of the time this battery is giving out more than 36 volts stated which is great because that's what you want however if you use someone's made up line cheating standard again we have 9s because we've got three batteries batteries in there with three cells in series not four so that's quite a big drop so nine in series at 4.2 volts fully charged yep big tick 37.8 volts for about 15 to 20 percent of the first cycle when it drops to 70 percent at 3.7 volts we get 33.3 volts which is way below the 36 volts we wanted and that's for 70 percent of the discharge cycle now yeah sometimes that'll be at 3.8 for some of it say 40 percent of the cycle or 30 percent of the cycle but that still only gives us just over 34 volts it's still nowhere near the 36 volts that we wanted so watch out for that when they say it's a 12 volt battery or it's a 36 volt battery just check how many batteries are in there to make that up so that's it so let's go and see what it does anyway line chin dang it man a bad man okay again we've got our one mile circuit and uh, no pedaling let's just see what she can do now 36 volt battery versus a 24 here we go oh that's definitely faster yep definitely faster already that's the 36 volts compared to the 24 whoa Well there you go, that's, uh, we're drawing this uh, first e-bike project to a close and that's where the motor is now. Um, basically the mechanics of it were just too flaky to, to continue. Although the bike could do 4 miles easily on the 24 volt battery and a lot less actually on the, 30, the dubious 36 volt battery, um, the reliability of it was suspect at best. Um, it did come off a couple of times. I lost a couple of chains, which I could repair, but you know you couldn't just use it on a day-to-day -day basis. However, as a first project, um, completely successful. I've learnt a lot about battery builds. I've learnt a lot about what, how many watts you need for a bike, what sort of speeds you can get, um, which has been great, and also where to purchase stuff on AliExpress because a lot of people have been saying, you know, you've got to be careful on on that. You don't get ripped off and all that. But doing my research, looking for different batteries and stuff like that, uh, there's been some interesting developments there. So uh, this is now confined to this little uh, parts bin until maybe I build a scooter or something with it, which could be quite cool. But I think I'm going to move on to Ratty Bike version 2. Um, and in that, I'm going to be looking into front wheel hub systems and 
proper battering controllers and stuff like that to actually make a commutable bike. Um, so I hope you can join me on that. That will include uh, stuff on purchasing from China and the, uh, the supplies I use. So uh, hope you enjoyed it. It's been good fun for this first one, but join me on version two. Cheers, bye. When you're putting your new design together, make sure you don't do that when you strap your box on. It, uh, it actually stops your wheel from going round. Fair warning. <laughs>